Okay, as you can see, I've already started throwing the base for the vase that we're making. This is five pounds of 213 porcelain clay. I am going to pull it up as high as I can, keeping the shape, of course, and then when I get to the top, I'm going to belly it out. I'm also going to leave enough clay at the top so that I can create a galley, which is where the coils of clay will sit as we begin to build the shape up with using the coils. Having already made the galley, I'm going to continue to pull and shape the base, getting it rounder and rounder as I go. I also, you will see me go back and keep reinforcing the galley because when you, as you're pulling up, you're pulling up that galley wall also and we don't want it to disappear. Okay, that's pretty beautiful. I think we're good with that. And now what I have here are ropes of coils that I made in my extruder. They are about a quarter of an inch thick. Again, the same clay body, 213 porcelain and I am laying them and also pinching them together at the same time using a little water to adhere them to the galley and to each other but not too much it's a little tricky here because we don't want it collapsing in on itself so I will use my fingers as you see to mush them together starting on the inside and start to make a wall You will notice that as I lay the coils one on top of each other, I am supporting them from the inside and the outside. Here I'm using a rib to smooth the outside coils together. I'll be doing the same thing on the inside. It's very important that you support the coils when you do this.
You want to be constantly supporting the wall that you're building with the coils. And if you look at my fingers, you see that I am pinching them together. Also, you'll notice that wherever one coil leaves off and leaves a divot, that's where I will start the new one. You need to keep control of the coils so that they don't start bowing out or in a direction that you don't want them to. It's also important that you keep them even and don't apply a lot of pressure. And now you see my hands supporting the walls on the inside and the outside. It's imperative that you continue to do this as you build. Okay, so here you can see now that I'm using my rib, otherwise known as a credit card or a hotel key, which also make great ribs. I'm using it to smooth the outside and to uh, really join it to the base that we threw. Also, on the inside, uh, you can't see it, but I am mushing up the galley so that it attaches really well to that first coil. You'll also notice that you can see the space where the coils and the pot were attached. I might add a coil on the outside there to fill that gap in, or I might just trim it out. that it's all uneven at the top. It will work itself out. I'm using a sponge and quite a bit of water to continue to meld the coils together. And you see that I'm also kind of pulling a little bit from the inside. Be sure and get any water that's collecting in the bottom out while you can. The higher we go, the less you're going to be able to get your hands in there. Okay, and now we're going to use an actual rib to continue to smooth and join all of these coils to each other and to the base. Take your time and use the rib to continue smoothing the outside. I can guarantee you that my wheel is not actually spinning as fast as it looks like in this video. You'll notice that in addition to smoothing the outside, I am also pushing the clay so that it starts to go in at the top. And now as we continue building, we want to use our sponge to wet the top coils so that the new ones will adhere to them. Also, don't forget to pinch, 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 pinch. I haven't studied it, but in all likelihood, this is how the ancient um, Egyptians and Greeks and Romans made their pottery. No, they didn't have a pottery wheel to throw the base on, but I'm sure they just made pinch pots and started to roll the coils by hand and pile them on top of the pinch pot. Okay, it's getting too tall for me. Now I have to stand up. And yes, it's wonky at the top again, but don't worry. Our trusty rib and our trusty hands will make it all work out.
you're going to do this, kids, I wholeheartedly recommend having an extruder. If you can't afford a wall hanging one, there are some pretty good handheld ones. I really can't imagine taking something like this on and having to roll all the coils individually. But I guess you can if you want to, and you know, if you're making something small, yeah, go ahead. But if you want to make a big base like this, you definitely want to use extruded coils. And now as we're smoothing, we're also pushing in a bit on the clay because I'm trying to make a pretty narrow neck on this. In a few minutes, I'll start collaring it to make it even smaller at the top. As you see, I'm using both hands to caress and pull the clay up even further, closing it in and making it smaller as I go up. Okay, so now I'm going to use this tool that looks something like a golf club. It has the rounded edge on the bottom. And I'm putting it inside because I want to belly the vase out a bit more. But, oh yeah, well, I forgot to have the wheel turning. And whenever you're um, throwing and shaping, you always want to have your wheel turning when you're, um, you know, trying to shape it. From here, I keep shaping and trimming. This is the fine part. So you see I'm getting the belly divots out of it. I'm still collaring the top. And this will take some time. And I'm sorry that I forgot to videotape the steps in between that last clip and this one. But I think you can understand how the shape was made, as I said. I kept shaping and collaring until it became the shape that I wanted, which is this. And now I'm going to do some trimming, and that will be it.
Thanks for watching. See you next time.